as a marathon as opposed to like a sprint and try to learn everything right now because I know I'm not going to know everything. You know what I mean? And you'll never know everything. You know what I mean? That's why I say you, you do as much research as you can. And then when you're out there, you try to practice what you've learned. Sometimes it might work. Sometimes it might not. It all depends also on the region you're in because sometimes you might be looking for a mule deer. Mm-hmm. And you're where you're at. There's no mule deer. And, you know what I mean? Stuff that will work for a mule deer is not going to work for a whitetail. And stuff that works for a whitetail is not going to work for an axis deer or exotics. But one thing we do, I can actually say is that whitetail and uh, hog and hondo, they like apple corn and orange corn. They like mm-hmm. the flavor corn. But out in Rock Springs, where we go hunting at, you know, we try the apple corn and they don't come after it. They'll leave it alone. The only ones that'll eat it with the hogs. But the exotics, you know, I mean, that goes out there and you got axes, you got like a Catalina goat, you got big horn. Yeah. And all kinds of stuff animals that go out there, you know, I mean, they'll they'll eat the regular, but they won't they won't touch that the flavor one for whatever particular reason. So, you know, I mean, we also gotta do our research and where we're hunting at. Right. And how well. how is hunting in Texas different from like let's say like Montana or Colorado? Was it also the terrain, you know, the animal itself? You know, I mean, you got to realize what what they like to eat and what they they're accustomed to eating there. Right. Or more specifically, I guess what my question was that should have been more specific was, like, like here, like since in Texas everything's privatized, you have to go on either either you own the land or you have to go on somebody else's land to hunt. Well, not necessarily. There are public lands you can hunt from, but the only difference is on public lands. I could be wrong. You can't bait. Oh, got animal. you. You can hunt. But you can't bait. So, like, what would be a good example of that? Like, in other words, uh, if you go on pu- hunting on public lands, basically you would look for a, a highway, a trail where the animals are using, and you set yourself up on a on a tree blind, a tree stand, excuse me, or a pop up blind near in the area, and you get yourself in a good. If you're shooting with the rifle at least sixty to hundred yards away. Make sure you got nothing. Where the bullet's going to travel and hit something mm-hmm. else behind you. you always got to remember when you're shooting something, where the bullet's going to travel. Because right. you, you don't want to hit something on the other side or somebody on the other side. But if you're hunting with the with the bow, it's just good because you can put yourself 10 feet up in the air. And you camel yourself out. Mm-hmm. You can just wait. And you know, especially if you go in the morning, you'll see uh, fresh tracks. Got you. Especially if it rains. You know, I mean, you see some tracks out there. You see some mud that's been moved. Then you go, okay, there might be a good spot. You set yourself up there and just wait. Got you. But, um, you know, I mean, it's a difference when you hunt on your on a property where you set up you set up your food plot or you set up your feeder and you'll set up a, a hog roller. A hog roller is basically a, a, pi- a PVC pipe, a quarter inch PVC pipe with some holes drilled into it. You cap it off with corn inside, stake it to the ground, and basically the hogs will use that to get the corn out. They'll spin it around. So mm. it keeps them entertained for a while. <laughs> At the same time, so it's like a like like a like a hog toy. It's like a hog toy, basically. Yeah. But they know every time they spin it, corn comes out. Yeah. So you know, say you're hunting and you fell asleep, and all of a sudden you hear the noise, the chain rattling, and all of a sudden you're like, "What the hell?" And you look, you see the hog trying to get it. Got gotcha. you. So it gives you enough time actually to wake up from your slumber. Uh huh. Because last time when you go to hunting, you know, I mean, you end up dozing off, you end up mm-hmm. because you relax, <clears throat> and you wake up and you're like, "Oh god, god damn, there's a hog there. Let me get ready." So you get yourself set up and you right. get the hog. It's kind of. It's, you know, I mean, like you say, it's it's a toy for them, right? But also, it helps you out because it's also like an alarm clock for you. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, it's the best of both worlds. So I remembered, and that's 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 pretty crazy. Um, because I was just thinking, like, how how did somebody learn to make it? They they just think, like, probably someone on YouTube. You know, you learned it on YouTube or well, something. Or probably somebody learned it from their probably their granddad or something. Yeah. And they just got pushed and they got. It, it just kind of changed. Like at one day, like a while back, it was like fucking a piece of tin with corn in it. Now it's like a fucking PVC PVC well, pipe. Well, at first when we started, we didn't use a four inch pipe. You know, what I mean, what we did, we got a, I think it was a twenty gallon water container, plastic one. We put corn in there and we used that for the beginning. And of course, it made a lot of noise, right? But mm-hmm. at the same time, like God damn, you know, what I mean, these fucking big things, these things are swinging around. And then. uh cousin joe goes hey man i saw it. it's a pvc pipe so we made that instead and so we started using that instead of using that giant giant water container right out there because all you see this blue container out there <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what i mean so like you know the landowner that we were hunting i go what the hell is that and we told him he's like oh shit okay yeah you know when we we're hunting in Atlas Coast, i think my cousin joe got a maybe a 300 pound feral hog oh wow yeah so i, I know those cool. hogs get fucking big man hell yeah man i saw one uh the other day i was driving out there uh, going towards somerset 
At first, I thought it was a, a big old trash bag in the middle of the road, man. And I was like, what the hell? It was like three trash bags. Yeah. There was one fucking haul crossing the road. I was like, God damn. Damn. I didn't know where to stop. Tried to hit it with my, gun, my knife or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hit it with my truck. But then they realized I want to damage my truck. So. Yeah. Take it for a ride. Hell yeah. Damn. So, like, going back to the Nepal, that's where I was going with it, because you talked about the, the slam on the on the back of the of the, oh, yeah. of the deer blind, right? So, he was talking about that uh, he, so there was a, an incident where somebody got one of the hikers or something on Everest, like one of the last hikes. Like, nobody was going up because of the weather, but he was in a short window, and he was just, he's a madman, man. Like, and he was just acclimated like no other. Um, and I don't think it was just necessarily from Nepal, but I think I believe it was his mindset. They always talk about the mind is a powerful thing, and I, I truly believe that, especially with more recently, more recent experiences. But he was talking about how nobody wanted to go up and rescue this person, and from when he was in the military, he was like nobody gets left behind. So he and his crew ended up going up, um, and they ended up having they got stuck there and had to stay overnight. He was giving the guy his his air. And he wow. actually, he went like, I want to say like hours without oxygen at this fucking insane high, uh, like you know, uh, altitude. And the body's a crazy thing, man. Yeah, and he said that he, he saw, and I don't know if that's th- through like hypoxia, which is like when you're at higher elevation, you fucking start hallucinating. Yeah. yeah. But he said he saw like a a, a yeti or something, um, yeah. out there like in the snow, um, and. So my qu- place to find it. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? If you're going to find it, that's exactly what I want to be at night. He's probably like, what are you crazy fuckers doing out here? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> you ain't got no damn oxygen? What's wrong with you? I didn't sign your permission to slip it, my way up here. Right? You were good at 8,000 feet. I don't know what you're doing at 12,000 now. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it, it's pretty wild. Like, th- like think about that. Um, like, if that's one of the reasons why. But, yeah, so when you said that, that's what I thought about was, you know, like, hallucination. But that wasn't Jaws case. No, it's never been the case. You know, matter of fact, uh we were in Atascosa, and actually, we were actually uh, working on the ranch. And uh, I don't know what we were doing behind the farmhouse. And all of a sudden, uh, Cousin Joe goes back, hey, check it out, Charlie. I'm like, what? At first, I thought he was fucking around. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. There's a print. I go, a print? What kind of print? Hog, dude? Yeah. He goes, no, a Bigfoot print. I go, shut the fuck up. You're fucking full of shit. Yeah. So, you know, being, you know, skeptical. Wa- walking around with a casing and shit, yeah, put it in the ground. Like, hey, watch out, I mean, Yeah. It doesn't work that way, but. You know, we, of course, we went over there, and it, it was over this big old uh, telephone pole that the, the owner had back there, and it was just like it stepped over it, and the, the, it had rained two days prior, so the soil was soft. Got you. So the print left an indention. You can see where some of the grass got squetched down. I'm like, what the hell? Right. And the sad part about it, we were there, and we never thought the one thing to do is take a picture of it. Damn. We were so dumbfounded that we're like, oh shit. So we try to we try to see where how, it, how big would you say it was? Like with if, like anything, if you were to put your foot next to it. Shit. I'm a I'm a size eleven. That thing had to be about sixteen or seventeen. Damn. It was a big foot, man. Shut. So we try to actually follow it where where we thought it might have gone. Right. And uh it got into uh this real heavy brushed area and we couldn't get in there. Yeah. You know, I mean I'm pretty sure with their thick coat, you know, they can do what the hell they want, but that was like, man, I go, we can't even get in there. How in the hell did this thing get in there? Yeah.